Hey Cancer, you divine moon child. I've decided to see whether you want an intro or not. Normally I do that little musical intro. Should I dump it? Or just and just come straight in, leave me a comment below. I'd appreciate it. Right, let's get stuck in to August. We have the sun trying Chiron, the wounded healer. Now, Chiron is all about the wounds we carry, the wounds that we've suffered in our life that we haven't let go of, that can impact us in all sorts of ways. Some of them end up being blessings and, and you know, make us stronger uh, and, and shift our worldview in some way. I'm not suggesting that wounds are good, but, you know, sometimes they're fertiliser for our soul and we heal them and move forward. But... Nonetheless, they are wounds that we never let go of. So in this instance, the sun, which is our identity, is shining Chiron. A great big light is being shone inside us to help us heal further those wounds or use them in a positive way. And it's, for you, it's all about your career and your sense of security. Have you hung on to things in your past? I mean, at the moment, you know, more than possible. But generally in your life, what's your attitude been to your career? Have there been insecurities that have stopped you moving forward? It's going to impact everybody in all different ways, but it's fundamentally about security and career and reputation. So have a little ponder on that. There's an opportunity for a big glowing love to come through that. On the same day, though, we have Mercury opposing Pluto. And Mercury is in your sign and Pluto is in your relationship zone. There may be a very intense conversation with a lover or partnership or even friendship but a one-to-one -one communication that may get a bit tense and it may be you know that you say something and I certainly wouldn't recommend laying down any ultimatums you know unless you mean it but it's to do with shifts and in and, and struggle or power struggle in a in a one-to-one -one relationship so you know very deep stuff though, all of this, these are profound conversations coming in. The full moon is obviously really important to you, you are a moon child, and when there's a full moon, you get the full blast as if it was even in your sign. This full moon is in a very intense position, it's in your life, death and rebirth position. And to top it all off, there is a T-square to Uranus, and also we have Mercury in your sign opposing Saturn. Again, I reckon there's some big, intense communication to do with relationships and it could be to do with secrets somebody keeping a secret you keeping a secret someone having an affair you having an affair um you know something going on that you didn't know about that comes to light with that full moon but certainly you should intuitively know what it is on that day of course don't be paranoid don't run with the ball if it's not you know going anywhere but there's some deep work or a revelation coming around that moon but the moon is in your position of coming into your power. So fundamentally, it's, you know, you are a powerful being. You are learning at the beginning of this month to be secure in yourself and to know that you are enough and that you can handle whatever is going on with this very full-on uh, full moon, which will last a few days. I mean, things shift for you when Mercury uh, leaves your sign and goes in into Leo because it allows you to stabilise what you've already built up and you, you feel very strong in what you're saying. You're drawing abundance to you. You're welcoming, you know, the chance to lay foundations with your words and to make commitments. Now, and also interestingly, Venus goes into your sign on the 7th. So there's a shift in your love life for the positive and you are feeling like a love magnet and there is a feeling of love around you other people want to hang out with you it's great for working on your relationship with yourself but it's obviously wonderful to have venus in your sign and actually you know you've gone through venus being in gemini for much longer than it normally is so you you know you're 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 ready for it to be in your sign you're ready to move forward and um, with the sun trine mars on the 15th you're feeling confident again in the decisions you're going to make about your life and your career and where you're going. And maybe that healing at the beginning of the month has really helped you with that drive. Um, the new moon is all about your sense of security in the world and, and abundance, and you're laying very firm foundations for that. And again, it cosmically indicates that you have more confidence, or certainly you can draw down more confidence. That's how I like to use astrology. It's not like a fatalistic thing. You know that energy's there, Whew, channel it and allow it to come through, because the, the new moon is trine Mars and sextile the North Node. You can create your future. You're taking action 
to create your future, which is great. Mercury then moves into, on the 20th, moves into your communication zone. The sun moves into your com communication zone. The next part of the month is really about your ideas and how you communicate them. Venus is opposing Jupiter on the 25th, but uh, any opposition with Jupiter is actually just makes us overconfident and eager and excitable and wanting change. And there's something, you're, you're super spontaneous when it comes to love and relationships around that time. Fundamentally, this month, there's a lot of important conversations. There's, there's some kind of restrictions, there's some sense of recklessness, there's some sense of wanting change and being able to have the courage to, to say, I want change and also being in your power. But you got this. It's intense, but you got it. Let's have a little look what the tarot have to say. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Okay, three cards. The King of Swords, you might be dealing with someone who's coming very much from their head rather than their heart. Um, they've kind of got their armour on. They're, they are maybe kind of a bit emotionally detached. And that's not like you, because you are like very emotional, very open and, and very soft. So it's how do you deal with that person? Well, and either another person's coming in, an Aries, Leo or Sagittarius, or you're taking on that energy, the energy to express yourself more strongly, not in the same, not in a dispassionate way, but actually the opposite in a very, very passionate way. And you know what? I, the Empress, for me, is always connected to you because you are the kind of earth mother, earth goddess, earth goddex, or you can channel that whatever your gender identity. You are the empress. You are able to give birth to ideas. You're able to be nurturing and loving to other people. So, and actually out of all of these four cards, obviously the empress is the major arcana card. So that's the strong one. And uh, so no matter who comes at you, Right, I do think there is someone who's going to be a bit e -e -e, pokey pokey with, with the sword. You are the Empress, which is more powerful than the Knight of Swords. And um, actually, you know, and you're grounding yourself. A lot, seems to be quite a lot of people around you this month as well. Use your intuition, be the High Priestess, be the Empress, and you, you can deal with all of this. You are incredibly powerful, and I believe you're going to come into your power in August. Take care, gorgeous. Come visit me on Instagram at Michelle Knight. So much love to you. Hi gorgeous, before you go, check out my new film on my fabulous psychics. A lot of people ask me for readings, I don't do them anymore, but for over 20 years, I've had an award-winning team of psychics that I truly handpick. So check out the film, let me know what you think. The purpose of a reading, I feel, is very much to inspire people and to empower people. It's about hope, it's about guidance using a phone or being with you, it will be the same because the matter is spiritual. It's very important for me that the client feels spirit with them. So it was a psychic reading. I don't remember the readings right after because it's not myself giving that, it's actually coming from spirit. And it is a bit like three-way conversations. I've got the person on the phone, I've got me, and I've got another voice that's telling me things. I even shock myself, things that I come up with, and I think, how did I, I get that? I'm channeling messages only for, for one purpose, to, to help people. It's been able to help somebody have a map back to where they've got lost from. My priority is to connect to your truth and have the best life that you can have. I think in my readings, people feel a sense of a safe space where they can really be themselves, let go. You need a feeling of being understood because reading should be empowering. I will make sure when the reading is finished that you're happy with everything. I, I couldn't do anything else. It's, it's, it's part of who I am. It's what I came here for, obviously. And when they come back and tell you they've got their dream job or the love of their life, that really makes me feel like I'm valued. I love to hear a sigh of relief. A lot of weight has been lifted off their shoulders. We have the answers that we are looking for within ourselves. I know I have the tools to help you. Everything begins and ends with you.